All right, so now is my uh, one of my favorite times in the evening. This is where I can sit back and um, enjoy and learn as well too. So it is my pleasure to uh, introduce you tonight to uh, Kate Engler. So um, uh, Kate runs a uh, masterclass called uh, Meet the Press uh, Masterclass. Uh, she um, and she uh, really helps, as I said before, businesses to go go out meet journalists, get free publicity, uh, which is worth thousands upon thousands of dollars. So um, she's a bit of a rule breaker, Kate is, and um, I'm not sure sort of uh, how some of the PR industries of uh, like her or hate her, but uh, she really brings uh, some of the tips and secrets into the hands of uh, entrepreneurs and business owners so that you don't have to go and hire some of the expensive PR firms to um, you know, go and uh, you know, do your pitches for you. And truth is, is that uh, some of those firms are great. Some of them are just awful, and you can spend a lot of money there, getting no results at, at all. Um, and others that are really good, they can be quite uh, expensive as well too. So um, one of the one of the great things is is that she brings together uh, business owners and journalists in the same room together. They get to uh, meet and greet rub shoulders together, uh, they uh, share stories. And uh, for the journalists, they walk out of that with a whole lot of uh, stories which they go to publication with. Uh, for business owners, they're able to pitch these journalists and meet them sort of directly and get sort of a conversation going so that they can find something that's really, uh, you know, a story that's, that's really worth uh, writing about. So they get into uh, the media as well too. So, um, so Kate really does challenge the way uh, publicity is harnessed by businesses, and she uh, gives them sort of um, hands-on access, literally to thousands of dollars of uh, free media. Uh, and it means that, uh, and free media means you don't have to pay for it. There are no ads, there are no sort of uh, no advertorials or anything like that. There, it truly is uh, getting your face in media. I've been in media. Um, uh, and uh, quite accidentally uh, sometimes, and uh, but the uh, pulling power of, of it is just phenomenal. You don't even have to be in there for your business. It can be j just the fact that you're in media. So, um, uh, so uh, I'm really excited about tonight because uh, I need to sort of brush off some of my uh, uh, rust that I've sort of learned from Kate from uh, years ago. I was at uh, her some of her very early courses, um, and uh, they were awesome then and it's just got even better uh, from there. So um, just, just to give you a bit of a roundup of some of the uh, places that some of her students have uh, appeared on. They've appeared on The Project, Car Current Affair, Today Show, Ticker, uh, Sunrise, ABC, Daily Mail. So that, you know, there's some of the TV uh, um, stations and they've got radio stations like 3AW, 2UE, 6PR, I think Hot Tomato was one too, ABC Radio. And then you've got the uh, national newspapers like The Age, Sydney Morning Herald, Herald Courier Mail, The Australian Herald Sun, Daily Tele Telegraph and a whole host of uh, local newspapers as well too. So um, I am uh, really excited to um, have you here, Kate. Uh, and I think that uh, everyone here is going to find her engaging. She's a very generous uh, presenter, uh, very warm, and uh, she's going to share a whole lot of stuff here tonight. So uh, make sure you've got your pen or your keyboard out. You'll want to take notes, uh, and this will have an impact for you and your business. So let's give a warm round of applause to Kate Engler. Thanks, Nick, and thanks everyone for the warm welcome. Now I'm just going to share my screen um, with you because I want to um, want to make sure that you guys get everything. Uh, right. So just let's see. Right. Can you guys see that big the first screen? Yep. Great. Okay. So I want to talk to you about um, two types of publicity tonight. We're mostly going to concentrate on the reactive side of publicity. So there's two sides of the publicity coin. Um, proactive is where we are going out pitching to the journalists ourselves. Um, and the reactive type is when the journalist is actually looking for the expertise that you have, and then you respond to that request uh, and it's a match made in heaven because they're already looking for you and you turn up as the expert and boom, away the coverage goes. 
So to do that, I want to talk about a business that's not actually mine. Source Bottle is not my business. It's owned by one of my uh, best friends, which is not why I'm talking about it, just because she's my best friend. Um, I'm talking about Source Bottle tonight because if you are in business in Australia or New Zealand and you are not on Source Bottle, you are bonkers. You are absolutely bonkers. And it may just be that you didn't know about it. So after tonight, if you're not on Source Bottle, you're bonkers. Because Source Bottle is a free service. And we love that word. Um, it's a free service. And it is where the journalists hang out looking for experts just like you. So tonight I'm going to share with you my nine top tips for blitzing Source Bottle success. So when you go out to the Source Bottle homepage, and it's source like be the source, not source that you put on your chips, um, this is what you'll see. On the left-hand side, there's a little box that says, I'm a journalist or a blogger. Don't tick that one. You want to come over to the right-hand side here. I'm a source seeking publicity. You want to click on that and you want to register an account. As I say, it's all free. When you are setting up your account, you can choose which other topics that journalists, um, that you will get notifications from journalists um, about. So this is the back end of my portal. And as you can see, I've ticked everything because when we have our Meet the Press masterclasses, we have a range of businesses that come to the masterclass. There's only ever one from each category. So, you know, if you're ever worried about your competitor, this is a great environment in which to be because your competitor, once you're in the room, your competitor will never have the opportunity to get in the room because we will decline them. So we tick all of these categories because every day, twice a day when this um, source bottle emails comes in, we scan it for our former masterclass graduates and see who we can flick which opportunities off to. So that's why mine, all of the boxes are ticked. But if you and your business have nothing to do with property or health and well-being, don't tick those boxes. And what happens then is the email that Source Bottle will send you twice a day is really finely curated for exactly what it is you are looking for and there's no wasted time. So just curate that to the best of your ability. I do want to say here though, think beyond the walls of your business and I'll drill down into that a little bit more as we go along. Um, you might not, your business might not have anything to do with health or wellbeing. But you might be a dedicated yogi who does yoga four times a week and you follow, I don't know, a paleo um, diet. So you have a general interest in your broader life about health and well-being. Tick that box as well. Because as Nick just said, and he's bang on, sometimes the media opportunities lie outside your core business and it creates you as a great source of um, other commentary because you get to build relationships with journalists beyond the walls of your business. So it's really important. When the call out email comes into your inbox, this is what it's going to look like. It lists in the pink. It's, it's kind of like the headline of what they're looking for. And then when you click on one of these, it will take you through to a larger description of what the journalist is looking for. And underneath that, there'll be a little text box. And that's where you respond to what the journalists are looking for. So literally journalists are looking for you twice a day. This is a gold mine. And it really just takes 10 seconds to scan through these call out opportunities and pick the one that's best suited for your business. So it doesn't take long at all. Just a quick scan, not today, delete it, move on with your day. Uh, but if there is something in there, it could be the gold mine that you're looking for. And as you can see, journalists want more than COVID, right? There's, that's just one page and there's three things that say not COVID, not COVID, not COVID. So if you think that the media cycle is consumed with this thing at the moment, think again, because journalists want more than just COVID. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about the top one a bit later, 
which was a call out from a journalist who writes for the Sydney Morning Herald and The Guardian. He's a really senior freelancer. Um, and, and I'll talk to you about how I responded to that because in my brain, and some of you on the call, like Tracy, already know about my kooky brain. There's quite a lot of people that live up there. And um, so I hear voices that help me with my work and life all of the time. So I was able to respond to that really effectively. And I'll talk to you about that a little bit later. So that's what the call outs look like. So when you then go through into the, uh, you click on the link and you go through to the longer description that I was describing before, this is the sort of thing that you see. Um, apparently there are two types of people in the world, those who have an internal narrative, their thoughts are like sentences they hear, and those who don't, they have abstract non-verbal thoughts and would need to verbalise them for them to be fully formed. I'm looking for both types of people. So then the journalist tells you um, what the deadline is. Don't ever pay attention to the deadline, and I'll, I'll circle back around to that later. Um, just, just respond straight away. And because you will have created an account, you will be logged in and your name and email address will automatically populate down here in this little box so that um, the journalist knows how to contact you. And then in this little comments box down below is where you will put your response. And we'll run through some responses together a bit later. So my number one top tip is timing is everything. So remember I just said, ignore the deadline that the journalist has put there. Please just ignore that. What we want is for you to respond to Source Bottle really quickly because journalists are working on five, six, sometimes eight stories at any one time. And the sooner they can get their experts for this story, the, the um, internal narrative story, the sooner they can get their experts for that story, the sooner they can write it, the sooner they can file it, the sooner they can move on to the next one. So even though they will put a deadline in there, I want you to ignore the deadline and don't think, oh, I've got two days to do that. Because by the close of business that day, the journalist may already have the experts that they're going to feature. And it kind of doesn't matter how brilliant your response is, they've moved on. So timing is everything. I want you to respond to these source bottle call outs as quickly as possible. They land in your inbox somewhere between 10 and 11 Eastern time and somewhere between two and three in the afternoon Eastern time. So just keep an eye on your inbox. And it is a bit of a muscle that you kind of need to get used to checking the source bottle call outs. But what you want to do is respond really quite quickly. So my number one tip, timing is everything. Why respond to a source bottle call out? This is really key because the why is going to directly inform the what. And what I mean by that is the why you want the journalist to respond, uh, why you respond to a source bottle call out is actually to get the journalist to call you. You want to entice them to come hither, come hither, come hither, come hither. You don't want to give them everything. You don't want to give them more in peace. You want to give them enough where they think, wow, I really need to speak with Diane. She sounds like she's all over it about this germ control when you travel, right? That's enough to get them to come hither. And then we want them to interview you. And they'll either do that by phone or they'll send you a series of questions. So if you keep in mind the why you want to respond to a source bottle call out, and that's just to open the dialogue of communication between you and the journalist, you will be much more refined and much more concise with what it is that you put in that little text box, right? So it's really important to keep the why in mind. When you respond, I want you to be thinking social media. I want you to be thinking chatty. I want you to be thinking light. I want you to be thinking to the point. I don't want you to be thinking um, really formally, you know, to whom it may concern. In your aforementioned inquiry, for people who hear an internal narrative, I wish to submit the following for your consideration. Point one, blah, 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 blah. Point one, point one, blah, 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 blah. Point one, point one, point two, blah, blah. You don't want to do that. You just want to make it really light and conversational. I'll show you exactly what I said to the journalist for that one. You really... So think social media, think, think the sort of thing that you would post on social media, short, sharp, to the point, um, supportive, be passionate about what your area of um, interest is, what your subject matter is that you're the expert on, and make sure you show that you're knowledgeable and that you stand out. So I was on a, um, 
I was on a call with one of our masterclass graduates the other day who was really getting frustrated that she wasn't getting much traction with Source Bottle. And she sent me through a couple of her examples. And one of them, she's a dentist, one of them was about a particular teeth whitening uh, product that is, a, that is an in-dentist chair teeth whitening product. And so the journalist said, wanting to speak with dentists to use this particular um, product, um, you know, let me know your thoughts. And so what, what beautiful Catherine did was she said, yes, I use this product. Let me know if you'd like me to answer some questions. Well, of course, the journalist wants her to ask some questions, but, but given the flurry of responses that the journalist would have got to that call out, she doesn't have the time, he, she doesn't have the time to phone Catherine and go, gee, I wonder if you're worth talking to because you haven't actually shown me kind of the colour of your money, the colour of your knowledge in your source bottle response. So I actually don't know if you're worth my time. And that's how journalists will think. They are very time poor. So make sure you show them that you're knowledgeable about the subject matter. All right. So here's an example of a light chatty response. This was years ago. Um, for a financial advisor. Um, financial advisor needed for short comment or advice. And then when, you, when I clicked through to get the longer description, it said looking for a financial advisor who can give advice on what to say to someone when having um, financial difficulties. Don't be concerned if the journalist nominates themselves as a freelancer. Don't think, oh, well, they're just a freelancer. They're not that important. Um, many, many, many very, very senior journalists who have left the major media are now freelancing back to that very same media outlet, right? The other, so, so you don't want to discount their, their importance and their seniority. The other reason why journalists will sometimes say that they're a freelancer is they don't necessarily want to tip off their competing media the competitor in the media landscape as to what stories they're working on. So they'll often put freelance. So don't be concerned about freelance, respond anyway. So I responded, hello, I have a financial planning client who'd be great at this. I had a mate who was a financial planner, so I just kind of put him into it. Um, hi, financial planning client who'd be great at this as he does a lot that's off calendar to help people who find themselves in a spot of bother. Look forward to answering your questions and assisting with your article. That was it. That was it. And the key two words in that response are, can anyone guess? I, can just, I can't really see the chat box. Um, but uh, Nick, maybe you can curate the chat because um, it's just not come up because I'm sharing my screen. But um, can anyone guess what the two key words are in that response? Any responses, Nick? Nothing yet. Nothing. Uh -uh. Thinking of calendar. calendar. Yes, exactly. That is exactly right. So what we've done by the strategic use of the word off calendar is demonstrated to the journalist that they're not going to get the run of the mill, you know, don't spend more than you earn. Blah, blah, blah. We're not going to get the vanilla sort of responses. We're going to have something that's different. So the journalist responded and said, hi, thanks for getting in touch. This is for body and soul. Here are the questions, right? So straight away, she came back to me because I showed and demonstrated that my guy had something that he could share. The other thing I want you to bear in mind is show that you're a good fit for what the journalist is asking. So if the journalist asked, um, you know, in that financial planning example I just gave you, if you responded and said, um, I work in a bank, I've just started as a counter teller. Um, I see people with really high credit cards all the time and I don't know how they got such a high debt. The journalist is like, you're not a good fit, right? So it's really important to demonstrate in your answer that you're a good fit for what they've asked for because they're really time poor and they've got other stories they want to file. So show that you're a good fit. Tip number five is give them what they ask for. Now, this is a classic. You may not know why the journalist has asked for the list of 10 things that they've asked for. 
but they know why they've asked for them. So make sure you give them every single one of those top 10 things they've asked for. Because if you only give them eight, guess what will happen with the first cull of responses? Everybody who didn't give them all 10 will be the first to go. It doesn't matter how fantastic the other eight were, the other eight responses were. If you've not given them all 10, you'll go to the bin. So just make sure you give them everything they ask for. And I'll give you a real life example of that in a bit. Um, make sure you stand out from the flock. Don't be afraid to take the contrary view of what the journalist is chasing. So this was an example, another mate of mine who is a naturopath. Uh, we had an example where the journalist called, uh, the call out was about the new phenomenon of activating nuts. And, and the journalist actually called them a new phenomenon. So my mate, who's a naturopath, Hayden, I sent it off to him and said, hey, you might want to respond to this. And he responded by saying, the, uh, it's not a phenomenon. And by the way, it's not new either. Activating nuts just means that you soak them. And, and back in the day, before we got too busy to be you know, worried about waiting for anything, we would soak the nuts, which make them easier to digest. Um, it washes off the nasty enzymes on the outside of the nuts, blah, blah, blah. And he listed the great benefits of soaking nuts, but he was very clear in his response that it wasn't a new phenomenon. And this whole activating was really just a, a, a buzzword. So he really stood out from the flock. And look what happened. He was the major voice featured in this article and he got 40 new clients from this article. Now, I love naturopaths. I absolutely love, I love, you know, I love all things sort of alternative health. I love a bit of woo-woo. Um, but, you know, when you walk into a naturopath's office, it's $130 for the consultation. But you walk out with $1,330 worth of potions and tonics and disgusting tasting stuff that they give you to get your body back into balance. So 40 new clients was a massive um, bonus for Hayden. Simply from one article, he got 40 new clients. So imagine what that did to his bottom line over the time. His clinic was booked solid for the next month. If you know the media outlet, I want you to tailor your response based on the media outlet. You don't always know this, so this, this won't always apply. But if you know the outlet calling for the expert is TV, you want to talk visual. You want to talk in pictures because TV is a moving medium. So you want to be able to convey to them the sort of vision that you can supply. If it's radio and it's talkback radio, then you want to be able to offer yourself as someone who's prepared to take talkback callers because that's the way radio works, right? Silence on radio is death. So you want to demonstrate that you know how the game is played and that you're happy to take talkback callers. So if you know the type of media, always tailor your response to that um, and you won't always know. So that's kind of a, an extra. Always have other experts to offer. So, for example, we were working on a publicity plan for one of our masterclass graduates last week and she has had a really amazing journey, but there, are, there were moments in all of the, um, I think there were 13 odd different um, media release ideas for her in the plan, where having a second voice, like either an HR expert or a psychologist was really going to add value to the overall pitch to the journalist. And so we made reference to that in her plan and gave her some names of people that she could talk to, to really bring those particular issues to life. So where you can have other experts and offer a, what we call a second voice for the journalists, you really want to do that because it will show the journalist that you are a great source of additional talent and that you also know how the media game is played. So where you can offer um, other experts, just do that. This is one uh, that I touched on before about think about, think beyond the walls of your business. This is me on a photo shoot for Prevention Magazine. 
they were looking, so they were, the Peace in Prevention magazine was inspiring women over 40, right? So, um, you know, I responded, it was a source bottle call out. I responded, they had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women who applied. And I applied and I, um, you know, got featured because I like what I had to say. What I want to say is this information on the page is kind of like someone has unzipped my inners and gone, this is who this woman is. This is what she stands for. It didn't talk about my business at all, at all. And yet I had women contacting me after this magazine hit the streets saying, we don't really know what you do, but we just love what you stood for. And they subsequently came to engage with us. So thinking beyond the walls of your business can be really, really powerful in terms of attracting like-minded and like-hearted people to do business with you. So don't be afraid to think beyond the walls of your business. The other thing, you remember I mentioned earlier about give them everything they want? For this particular call out, the journalist wanted a lot of things. They wanted um, obviously name, age, height, weight, sh uh, shoe size, clothing size, hair color, eye color. I think that was, oh, and they wanted, I knew there was another thing. They wanted uh, to have the people submit a photo that would not be used. They said it would not be used. So the first part, when I was chatting with the journalist, the first cull they did of that was people who didn't include all of the elements that they'd asked for. Now, the reason they asked for all of that is one, they were going to dress us. So you, so you can see here in the background, you can see all of the clothing racks lined up in the background. There were walls of clothes in the appropriate sizes for all of us because they were dressing and styling us. So that's why they asked what clothing size you were and what shoe size we were. Um, and, and height and weight was really important for them as well. And that is because they didn't want all of the inspiring women to be little skinny mini size eights. They didn't want all of the inspiring women to be gorgeous, luscious, diva shaped opera singers. They didn't want all of the inspiring women to be blonde, which is why they asked for a photo, nor did they want them all to be brunette. They wanted it to be a real mix. They were only choosing 40 women. So they wanted diversity. And that's why they asked for all of those different things. And I've been, um, I've presented this at, at business networking groups and it is amazing how many people get really offended, women get really offended when I list off the things that the journalists ask for, particularly when they talk about height and weight and clothing size. And I just need to say, if it offends you that much, don't respond. You know, it's not like the journalist is sitting there going, gosh, I really hope Gladys responds to this call out. Like they don't even know who Gladys is with the greatest of respect to you, Gladys. They don't know who, who you are. So if it offends you that deeply, just don't respond. Move on and find a, find a call out that doesn't offend you so much. But if you are going to respond to one of these types of call outs, give them everything. Because if you're not going to give them everything, you might as well not respond. Okay, so I want to give you some examples of some really great um, call out responses. But before I do that, I want to give you an example of a really bad call out response. So I was working with the um, editor of Inside Small Business and we, I was talking to him about um, survivor guilt. Um, there were a lot of businesses, mine included, who did really well last year in 2020 but it was kind of something you didn't really talk about. You know, you kind of whispered it in trusted circles because so many people were in pain. So there was compassion for that pain, but also it felt like people weren't actually that here, happy to hear about people that were really successful in 2020. So there was this kind of, I called it um, thriver guilt. And so this call out went out to find other businesses that had done really well in 2020 to be included. Because remember, I talked about always include the second voice. So this call out went out. Business done well and you're feeling a little guilty about it. We want to talk to business owners who did well 
in 2020 despite all the setbacks. Faced with this success when so many have struggled, did you get an attack of the guilt at how well you'd done in 2020? So really short, sharp, concise, specific call out that this um, editor and I did. This was one of the responses that he got. I'm an, I don't know who this, I don't know who sent it in by the way. Um, I'm an, and I'm gonna read it to you because if we had to suffer through this, so do you. Um, uh, I can see Nick laughing. I'm an international author and simplicity expert. Having experienced mental health issues after suffering burnout and complete breakdown as a result, I wrote my first book during recovery, which received international critical acclaim and five star awards. Burnout on the rise all over the world. This saw me create a global business teaching people there's a very different way to live so they can tailor make their, the life that allows them to lead happy, rewarding and successful life. From global burnout to uh, from burnout to global business happened within three years. So already she's outside or he or she is outside the brief because we've just talked about 2020 and this person is talking about a three year period. There's nothing normal about being constantly stressed and exhausted, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? It goes on. <laughs> I don't think it's ever comfortable. Uh, I don't think it's ever a comfortable feeling doing well when others are suffering. Oh, I'm no exception, but where we are a full page into this before we reasonably start to address the brief, right? So, so we don't do this, right? Don't do that. This is not a great example of what he did here. Let's talk about some great examples of some call outs. So last year during uh, the Australian Open, Nick Kyrgios had a meltdown and one of the journalists called out, what can we learn from Nick? The call out was in the days after the 2020 um, racket smashing incident at the Oz Open. So I you guys, great, great to see you covering pressure for, uh, as a topic for an article. It's an important area for coverage, whether it be sports arena, the boardroom or other areas of leadership. So already, what Joe has done, this is this is from Dr. Joe Lukens. What she's done is broadened the meltdown, stressed out response beyond the sporting field and into other areas of life. Um, the challenge and frustration is blah blah blah. I have worked in elite sports performance for nearly thirty years and wrote about managing the pressure in my book. I'd be pleased to support your article if you're seeking an expert view. See how that's really to the point, but she's actually added value to what the journalist has um, been talking about. And the journalist is like, awesome, thanks for responding. Let her know that, let Joe know that the article was for a new online journal, ask for further handy hints. And she requested that the comment, the journal requested the comments be returned by one o'clock that same day. So remember I talked before about timing is everything and they're really pacey and they want the information nice and quick. That shows you exactly what I was talking about. So Joe responded, here are some further thoughts, blah, blah, blah. And here are some key tips. Pop, 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 pop. Now, this second response was probably a little long. And you can tell it was probably a little bit long because the journalist said, thanks, Joe, your responses were absolutely great. I hope you don't mind, but I combined some of them. So the lesson for Joe here was to kind of get them down, right? I'd love to talk to you about becoming a regular contributor. And Joe has subsequently gone on to become a regular contributor for this magazine. So who knows what doors are opened on this magical platform called Source Bottle, which is free for you. And here's the article and all of these things in with a big pink rectangle around them, that's all our masterclass graduate being quoted. And as I said, she's gone on to have other uh, articles in that magazine. <laughs> As important, for comments. That's it. That's as much information as the comment. So, as the master graduate, um, the very important body, the patient's gut pain is to ensure that there's no inflammation, is to stimulate the vagus nerve. Um, then they talked a little bit about what they do, which I didn't love, but the reason they were able to claw it back is because... 
the it dreaded like, free uh, screen. There are a few, there are a few internet connections uh, in Perth. She's over in Perth, Western Australia at the moment. So uh, we'll just daughter. wait for her to pop back on. To put her into lockdown. I think, yeah, well, she, she's been in <laughs> lockdown you, over I, there. Who said that about having anxiety about lockdown because we came over from Victoria for my son to do a drone course. We had to self-isolate for two weeks. We got out Monday 10 days ago, um, my son did the first day of his drone course, and 10 o'clock that night, four-day lockdown. So oh, I'm no. like I'm like sitting in the corner, Rocky, with them. Anyway, I just the word lockdown. So let me go back. Can you – you guys can't see that yet. Hang on. Let me share screen. Oop, I think the share screen has just uh, dropped her out again. She'll be back. <laughs> how, how are you enjoying it? Any um, any good uh, comments out of this so far? Yeah. I've been on Source Bottle for a while, Nick, and, and I don't um, uh, I don't jump on often, but when I have, um, I've been quoted or linked to my website. So yeah, it's a great it's a great source. Excellent. Fantastic. It looks like Kate's back. I am back. Sorry. That's right, all good. Let's, let's try this again. Let's go again. We'll just fast forward through to where we were. Ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba. All right. So we're up to the vagus nerve. Um, and what I was saying was they jumped in halfway through the response with what their clinic actually does, but they pulled it back to be reasonable with the final paragraph where they said you can manually stimulate the nerve, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they, they, were, they kind of recovered. Hi, Claire. Thanks for replying. I'd love your uh, help with this. It's a piece for body and soul, which is a really great piece. It's a really great get. So here are the questions. And then Claire responded. And look. Here she is in body and soul. Here, all of this, and over here as well. So it was really worth, um, really worth her responding. So Source Bottle is a bit of a muscle because it comes into your inbox twice a day. If you're busy, it's really easy to go, uh, not today, uh, not today, uh, not today. But then you get into the habit of going, uh, not today. And you are literally throwing away tens of thousands of dollars of free media coverage that you could otherwise be grabbing. Um, here's another one, tips on staying calm Christmas. Uh, what can people do to reduce the tension? Here's another one of our psychologists. And I love the way Donna opens this. Good morning, as a psychologist of 16 years, boom, credibility right up the front. I work over this period. So everyone else is taking Christmas off, right? And Donna's saying, I work over this period as the office is extremely busy. I'm happy to answer any questions and have them back to you ASAP. By saying I'll have them back to you ASAP, Donna is demonstrating to the journalist that she knows how the media game is played and it is pacey. Um, what can you do to reduce the tension? And then she gives them some tips. So it's short. See how short that is? Like it's really short and concise. And the journalist came back with these questions. And so then Donna went, she answered them. Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. And there she is in who magazine like that's pretty sexy pretty sexy for our lovely donna so these are the um, another example of a call out um, i'm a clinical nurse blah 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 and again it was clear very short sharp succinct to the point g'day claire thanks for connecting we've reviewed your social media profiles and you look perfect so if you've got social media profiles where you are half naked dancing on the table and that is not kind of representative of what your business does. I mean, if you run tabletop dancing lessons, that is the perfect photo. But if you don't run tabletop dancing lessons, half naked tabletop dancing lessons, that those photos and that content on your social media probably isn't going to help your media profile. So just be mindful. Um, we're going to send you through the questions. So they sent through the questions and she got the coverage. Now, this is the one I talked about before, about the internal narrative. This is what Gary was after. I'm looking for both types of people. Um, what, what is it that you get in touch? 
So I responded, hello there. I have a very strong internal voice and I call her Madam Secretary. She's the brains of the outfit and she often comes up with thoughts, ideas and suggestions, usually for clients, that I hear very clearly. I also use her for questions or challenges that I have. I simply invite her to take over the challenge or problem and come up with the solution for me. Inevitably, she does. I also have what I call a studio audience around me and there are times when I can hear them laugh, gasp or even sit, raising their eyebrows as what is happening around me or being said. My kids think it's hilarious. Hope this helps, happy to chat anytime, and I gave my number. So really clear response, um, addressing exactly what the journalist um, wanted. And he goes, thanks so much, I'm oh, interested in chat, can we make a time? I said, sure, baby, and we did, and there it is in the Sydney Morning Herald. And it appeared um, online in Sydney Morning Herald and The Age. Pretty cool, huh? The other cool thing about this is Gary, um, when I was talking to Gary, I was mentioning the Meet the Press Masterclass because that's really when Madam Secretary comes into her own. She really comes and plays big time on the media angles for the um, attendees at the Masterclass. So I was explaining that to him. And then afterwards, he's like, what's this Masterclass all about? And he's now become one of the favourite journalists at the Masterclass. And when he comes to the Masterclass, you're kind of pitching to about six different mastheads because as a freelancer he's got very senior role with about six mastheads including women's weekly and the guardian so it was you know it just all worked it was just very um very synergistic so you just never know what doors will be opened by responding to a source portal call out so in terms of the sixty four thousand dollar question what do journalists want they want clear concise responses to their call outs when you are pitched, so that's in terms of a reactive way. When you are pitching to them proactively, they want you to pitch them something that is newsworthy and media worthy. It's not about your thing. You know, people have their thing, their business, and they just love it. They just love their business so much. And it's great to love your business, but it's not about your thing. Your business, your book, your new product. It's not about your thing. It's about the story that sits behind your thing how you're helping people with your thing. That's what the journalists want. And that's why, um, you know, they, they use uh, Source Bottle because they're really clear on what they want and you're able to respond really effectively. Um, and that's why they keep coming to the, you know, to the masterclass because, um, you know, we train everybody before the journalists get there in how to pitch exactly. So I've just got some questions in here. I'm just going to... Um, Thank you, Leslie. Um, what am I doing? Thank you for reminding me how important it is. Great. Yes. Put your, well, good. Put your alarms on in your phone twice a day. Go you, Shari. That's awesome. So it's a bit like a, a cross between responding to a cover letter and writing an online dating profile in terms of language and inclusion. Well, it's it's got to be seductive, right? It's got to be seductive um, so that that's I guess the dating profile I don't do that I don't do um, online dating so I've got no idea really I'm kind of the blind leading the blind here but um but it's the cover letter would be too long right whereas I, and I don't know about dating profiles as I said because I don't do it so um are they short if they're short then then I guess yes but but it's we want to the cover letter can often be very generic, right? What we want to do is be really specific, like laser focused with how we are responding to the call out and giving them exactly what they want. Um, Thomas, it doesn't matter if you're not a very good writer, because as I said, it's not that you who make me concern. Um, it's really about, I mean, I'd love to know what you do, Thomas. If you can put it in the chat box, what you do, then I'll make up a call out and kind of give you an idea of how you'd answer that on the spot. Can you remind me of the approximate times of call outs are posted? Yes. So you'll get an email in your inbox. So you don't have to go anywhere or log. And what company, what's the product, Thomas? You don't have to go anywhere or log into Source Bottle or do any of that. The email will be delivered into your inbox twice a day. So it'll be there as a reminder. Uh, between 10 and 11 ish Eastern time and between two and three ish in the afternoon Eastern time. That's when the call outs come. Um, so a digital, digital agency. Okay, so you're welcome, Elena. So if, um, if the call out might have been, um, I don't know, I'm making it up, but what have, um, what have been the digital lessons for 
small to medium businesses from the COVID pandemic. You might say something like, Uh, many small to medium businesses were in the dig digital dark ages before COVID. COVID dragged a lot of people kicking and screaming, but COVID also opened the door to people to become to come skipping through the digital door and connect with their clients in a different way. The key three takeouts for how small to medium businesses, um, the three, three key lessons maybe, how small to medium businesses can connect digitally with their clients include but, but, but. Great story, lots of businesses who were scared of digital have now really embraced it, happy to talk more. So that would be all you'd say, Thomas. And again, that's a made up, um, it's a made up call out, it's a made up response. Um, but that's all you need. You know your stuff, Thomas. You have to know your stuff because you're the business development manager, right? So you know your stuff and it's just reflecting what you know on the page. Um, how quickly to respond to them? Straight away if you can. Straight away if you can. I think Source Bottle is probably useful, but I've used it for six months and nothing came um, up on Antarctica, which is my niece. I applied niche, I applied for my couple, very loosely related, but it's no good. I think it's good for coaches though. Well, I think it's good for way more than coaches. I mean, I think I've seen, I can think of um, three or four travel. I know that your area, it, it, do you, what do you do in Antarctica, Sean? I'd like to understand a little bit more about Antarctic being your niche. Do you run tours there or do you work down there as a scientist or are you a geologist? I'd like to know a little bit more about what you do. And feel free to unmute um, Sean too, if that is easier for you than typing. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to take questions from anybody about uh, anything, that, you know, within reason. Um, I can't help you with things I don't know about. Does it work in reverse where I'm looking for guests? You can, but um, Stephen, you're the one with the podcast, right? Probably um, there, there really does need to be media or um, so it probably wouldn't be appropriate for you to post call outs for podcast guests. I'm uh, trying to message myself as an expert on Antarctica. Yes, but what in what field like science, geology, travel, tourism, adventure travel, expeditions, surviving hypothermia, you know, getting getting there. Maybe unmute Sean if you want to, that might be easier. Um, just to unmute. Where are you Sean? I'll stop sharing my screen now because I've, I've um... Sean has got the picture of Antarctica in behind him. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can find him. Where is he? Oh, Sean, there you are. So, so Sean, just unmute my darling. Um, help me understand what about Antarctica is your speciality? Sorry, sorry about that. I couldn't find myself to unmute. That's okay. Um, yeah, look, I've been running um, Facebook sites about Antarctica for a couple of years, just building up a profile. And uh, I'm about to start, I haven't monetized it all. I've been about to start doing a membership site because a lot of people have Antarctica as their bucket list um, target. Yep. And so I, I'm planning on showing people how they can get there because there are numerous ways, you know, from, from working there as a scientist to arts fellowships to paying for going on a cruise, that kind of thing. But what I'm trying to do this year is build up that media profile so that when something comes up about Antarctica, they think of me as the, you know, person of choice to yeah, ask right. those questions, right? Uh, so yeah, look, I think Source Bottle is is a good source, but uh, I, I I haven't seen anything that's kind of related to it. Um, and I also um, I did a search just uh, every now and again on Antarctica, but nothing ever comes up. Yeah, see, listening to you talk, remember I said in the one of my tips is think beyond the walls of your business. Yeah. I've seen plenty of call outs about unusual careers, um, changing careers midlife, um, how you can, how can you, how you can create the career of your dreams. All of those call outs you could have responded to. Okay. So um, think beyond the walls of your business. Don't just think Antarctica, because if you're saying people can get down there as scientists or this or that or the other, 
they're clearly not doing that now, right? They're clearly not working in Antarctica as a scientist or a geologist or whatever, however else you can get them down there. Right. So they have to do something different in their career in order to get there. So call outs about different careers or change of careers or reinvention, reinvention of oneself, perfect for you, but it's outside the walls of Antarctica. So Sean, what I would invite you to do is to take the blinkers off and have a broader look at Source Bottle because I think there are more opportunities there than you realize. Okay, all right, I'll have a look. Great, awesome. Thanks. Um, so Miko, you've got a question. Hi, thank you so Hi. much for sharing. Pleasure. Today. And uh, um, I have done, uh, I have made a, before, I made a um, media release and send off to the journalists and I uh, received some interview from radio and newspapers. But um, <laughs> thank you. But I wanted to, I found the difficulties to find how uh, to find the journalists. And I asked around and some people uh, um, advised me or maybe try this and try that. And I sent some uh, Facebook messenger for to ABC News and radio. And I, that's how I got the interview from ABC radio. But um, I just wondered how I can, if a source photo I will check, but um, if I have something want to share and want to contact to the journalist, how I can find an, uh, their contact? Yeah, that is kind of another sixty-four thousand dollars question. Um, source <laughs> bottle, so you can't get on Source Bottle and sort uh, and search for journalists. It's not that. That's not what the platform does. Um, there are annual subscriptions you can get to things like AAP Media Net, which lists every journalist in the country. That's about four and a half thousand dollars a year, um, which is probably beyond the realm. Um, I mean, this is one of the reasons why lots of small to medium business love the masterclass because I bring the journalists directly to you um, and that's a massive gap filler gap leaper gap whatever you get there's no more gap is what I'm trying to say <laughs> because the journalists come into the same room as you um, but the other way is is Samika you just you really need to be consuming the media that you want to target this is true whether you come to the masterclass or not and Tracy can talk to you about how much I bang on about that and how she heard the journalist say listen to our program watch our program read our publication because the only way you will understand which journalist is writing about what inside of each of those publications that's relevant for your business and what they're writing on, more importantly, is to consume the media you want to target. That's a really big takeaway. Um, consume the media you want to target, and that can help. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Oh, there's more questions in the chat box. Oh, it's thick and fast. I love this. Um, uh, great. Okay, that's all great. Excellent. Are there any other Questions? If there's no other questions, uh, one of the things I'm curious about is um, you obviously get all these journalists in, in a room all together. They're really busy people and, uh, uh, and they've got deadlines and all that. What do they get out of coming into, uh, you know, the room that you've got there with um, business owners, apart from just the obvious yeah, they get they get so much, and and because the, the masterclass is a two day masterclass, um, day one is spent training everybody to within an inch of their life in preparation for the journalist. So when the journalists arrive on day two, it's a bit like there's this luscious, juicy, gorgeous, succulent, mouth watering, delicious smorgasbord of pre selected because it, the, no, nobody can get not just anyone can get into the masterclass. It is an application process. Um, Pre, so pre-selected, pre-trained businesses that are on this yummy smorgasbord and the journalists spend the day just munching their way through everybody because every single business in the room gets to pitch to every single journalist in the room. 
And they come back masterclass after masterclass after masterclass looking for new stories and looking for new experts. So at the masterclass we just held in May in Sydney, journalists were saying, oh my God, you've done the next three months worth of work for me. I've got so many stories to take back and, and work on. Because they are looking for new talent all of the time too. And new stories and innovative businesses and businesses who they haven't heard of before. So it is a bit like a feeding frenzy for them and it, it cuts down, it compresses their work time considerably. So yes, whilst they come and spend, you know, eight odd hours with us, um, what they get on the, off the back end in terms of stories and experts is massive. And that's why, um, you know, that's why the masterclass is you know, nine years in because if we weren't serving up the yummy smorgasbord to the journalists, if we were serving them up a piece of half cooked chicken on a three day old soggy salad, um, they'd stop coming, right? Because it's not worth their while. So that's why they love it. So it must be interesting holding this masterclass during COVID at the moment. Yes, well, obviously we had to do a major shift around last year. We are a very up close and intimate and personal sort of masterclass. But when we redesigned it last year, I was really committed to maintaining that intimacy and maintaining the connection. And even though it's done live stream, it's not just, well, I was going to say me sitting here, but it definitely won't be me here because I'm in Perth. It's not just me at my home office. We basically build a TV studio and we broadcast it out to everybody. And even though your physical body is in the one spot, you will be moved around from group to group to group and across all of the journalists and across each other all of the time. So it's really interactive and we were able to recreate that connection and the intimacy that we've known for. So it was great. It was, it was um, you know, a stretch to begin with. There's no question about that. Um, and, but, you know, we've, we've kind of fine-tuned it now. And um, so the next live stream is at the end of the month, actually. So it's kind of perfect timing because there's no, you know, no border problems, no travel problems, no accommodation problems, no cancellation problems, kind of no risk. The journalists are all just coming to, um, to everyone's lounge room or home office. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of good timing in that regard. Well, school holidays, that's when lockdowns sort of seem to happen. So... Um... <laughs> So uh, it, it all goes on. Uh, Adrian. Yeah, hi. Thanks, Kate. That was fantastic. I actually had some great success with Source Bottle a while back. I've let it go, so now it's time to reconnect. But a question for you. Can you put the link in for that event at the end of the month, please? Um, sure. Nick, can I leave that to you and your beautiful tech people to pop the... The link in pop. there. Yes, indeed. Nick, just drop Nick, in. looks, Nick hosts my website, so he, he does, I don't speak fluent geek. I speak fluent journalist, um, but Nick speaks fluent geek, so he, I think, can um, arrange that. Um, yeah. Arrange that. that with us oh, maybe. JM's put it in. Oh, JM, you're a legend. You speak fluent geek as well. Already, wow. Well done. Um, the thing about what what um, uh, niche, what industry are you in, Adrian? Uh, so several. I've worked in the coaching psychotherapy space, but I'm also an author, and I run a charity helping men with relationship education to stop oh, fantastic. relationships. So I've yeah, great. Relationships. relationships are always hot, 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 hot. And to have a male perspective on relationships, really sexy. And, and we only have one of each category. So if there are other men working in the relationship space, Adrian, yeah. if you're offered a place and you accept it, I won't even speak to them. Fantastic. I might, 10 of them might apply the next day, but I won't speak to them because we only have one business per category. And, you know, we've got a beautiful LinkedIn specialist and she comes to all of the, all of the masterclasses because she wants to keep her competitor out. Fantastic. <laughs> which is kind, which is kind of funny and kind of smart. Yeah. I work very much in that space with my charity and uh, helping men not to step over the line in the sand in relationship. So it's a Great. very... Very Love specific it. target market for us. I'd welcome a chat with you, Adrian. If I can help put a little bit of oxygen underneath your wings of that sort of message, boyfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. Fantastic. Yes. We'll connect anyway. Thanks, Kat. Lovely. Pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure. Now, there's questions in the chat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Submitted my first call out. Thanks for the great tips and inspiration. Is it helpful to send the journalist my author speaker bio? No. 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 Um, I don't even need to look at it. Because, uh, and this is a really hard thing to say to authors, right? Um, when you write a book, you love the book, right? And you should. It, it takes, it's quite a feat to put down 300, 400, whatever pages of a book. So by the time you're 
finished, you are totally in love with it and I get it. But I'm here to tell you that your publicity is not actually about your book. And that is kind of telling you like you've got an ugly baby. It's not true. Um, if you don't have an ugly baby, you have a beautiful baby. But publicity is not about your book. I want you to think of the issue that sits behind your book. A bit like when I said it's not about your thing, your business, right? It's about the issue that sits behind your business. So too it is with the book. The book is not your engine room when it comes to pitching to journalists. Your book is the caboose. It will just come along for the ride because the issue is the main thing we want to focus on, the main thing we want to pitch. Does that make sense? Um, hang on, just let me go back. I just have forgotten your beautiful name, um, Marley. So um, we really want to focus on the issue behind the book. So a couple of years ago, I'll just give you a very quick example. I'm mindful of the time, Nick. Um, a woman wrote a book called Mealtime Without Mayhem, which was all about getting kids to, you know, eat well. And every time she submitted a media release for me to have a look at before it went out to the journalists, she would talk about new book, Mealtime Without Mayhem, new book, Mealtime Without Mayhem. And I would say to her, my darling, it's not about the book. So on one occasion when she sent in a media release, Jamie Oliver was in Australia. He was talking about his food revolution. And he was quoted in the Sydney Morning Herald as saying that for parents not to sit at the table with their children with no TV or anything on was unforgivable. He actually used the word unforgivable. So instantly I knew we had our new headline. So the headline was um, parents think it's a nightmare, uh, kids think it's boring. Uh, no, Jamie Oliver says it's unforgivable. Parents think it's a nightmare and kids think it's boring. Why tech free mealtimes are vital for kids' health. And boom, she was on the Today Show. And guess what sat on set on the, on the coffee table next to her while she was being interviewed? Her book. So her book came along as the caboose. So I want you to think about your book like that. I hope that's helpful. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we're, uh, we're out of time. So, we're well uh, out of time. Sorry, I've gone a bit over. No, that was a great session. Everyone enjoy that and hopefully got some uh, good inspiration, some tips and things you can use. Awesome. Um, and so, so to get in touch with you, uh, you know, if anyone want, wants to connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Um, the best way is to flick, um, flick a message on the Facebook, which is the Publicity Princess um, Facebook page, or the best email is admin at thepublicityprincess.com. Or you can just click on the link that um, JM put in the, the chat box. Um, just if you are going to email, just let Catherine know that you're from Nick's webinar so that we don't think it's some random stranger that we don't know um, because it might be one of your competitors, Adrian, and we don't want that. Um, so we want to make sure we have the context of where you're from. And so just let Catherine know if you're going to email. So admin at thepublicityprincess.com or better still, um, just click on the link that um, Nick and the team have put in the chat box and you get straight through to us. And, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. And James just dropped that link back into um, chat again as well too. Beautiful. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Well, look, thank you so much, uh, Kate, for uh, all of your uh, uh, generous sharing tonight, the wisdom that you've got. And uh, there's just a ton of info in there for uh, Source Bottle. I am excited to get back into Source Bottle and <laughs> get some stuff. You just make it sound so easy. <laughs> but it is. Like, people overthink it. Like, just put your brain out to pasture for a minute, speak from the heart with your knowledge, and you'll blitz it. Absolutely. All right, so we do actually have a couple of uh, door prizes start today as well too, haven't we? So uh, just tell us about those. So the that. door prizes, um, there's one for, for a couple of people. I think we, we agreed three um, people. When we gather the journalists at the masterclass, before we break them into the pitching pods where every business gets to pitch to every journalist, we have a panel discussion with them. And so the door prize tonight is a transcript of one of those panels where the journalists are telling you exactly what they want, exactly when they want it, like right down to best day and best time in the day to contact them 
to be able to pitch what you've got to them. So in terms of a fast track and getting the inside running on what the journalists want, it's all captured in this little yummy transcript. And that's the door prize for you guys tonight. Because I really want you to, you know, I want your publicity to be successful. I don't want you to circle back to Nick in six months ago, that publicity is a load of bollocks. I really want to fast track your publicity journey, which is why I talk so much about Source Bottle rather than my business, because it's low hanging fruit. I want you to get on it. So that's the, that's the door price, is the transcript of the journalists. Awesome. Who wants that there? <laughs> All right. All right. We've got a special way to uh, draw this. Oh, look at you go with this technology. See, I told you this uh, fluent geek, everyone. This is geek speak. So this we've got everybody's geek. name in here. And uh, remember the rule, you have to be here to win. I know, so if, uh, unfortunately, a couple of people had to drop out sort of partway through. But uh, if it lands on someone's name that isn't in here, we'll have redraw it again. If we do land on your name, because we've got sort of the whole screen full of people, just unmute yourself and say, yay, so I know that uh, you're here. All right, let's spin the wheel. And a drum roll, please. Ding! Donna Arnold. Is Donna Arnold in the room? Donna, are you here? Let's have a look. I'll look down the list of names. Oh, she might have had to duck out early. Oh, bum bum. Oh. That's not a great start, is it? I'll let her know that uh, if, that she won if, he, if she just stayed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's redraw again. That's kind of evil, isn't it? Oh, you won, but you weren't there. So suck yeah. in. You kind of missed out. <laughs> exactly. All right. Jinder. Yes. Oh, all right. Looks like Jinder, Jinder Lee, you're here. Awesome. Yay. Okay, so uh, Jinder, if you pop your um, uh, email into chat or your details into chat to Kate, so you can select Kate in chat, just pop her your details and uh, she'll organize to uh, get that through to you. And let's, uh, and we've got one more to, to, is it one more to go, Kate? No, two more. Two more to go. They've got right. three in total. All right. Oh, Selena Budgeon. Are you here, Selena? That's yes, awesome. Yes, I'm here. Yay! <laughs> uh, Selena! Yay. How good is that, eh? Perfect for you. And our lucky last one. Who's going to be our lucky last winner tonight? Clicking round. And that'll be Jean. Are you here, Jean? Oh, do we have Jean here? Yay! Yes. Did yes. We... Yay. <laughs> yep, Jean's here as well, too. So well done. Congratulations. Uh, that's uh, three of those uh, drawn. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Camera's just come on for the last minute. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, lucky. you either drop your info into the chat box or those three people, Jean, Jinda and Selena, you can just email um, email Catherine and put door prize in the subject line and, uh, and we can get that out to you. It might be easier. Awesome. So that email address is in chat as well. So remember the three little dots at the bottom of chat on the bottom right hand side. If you click that now, you'll get to uh, to save it, um, and then you can it's email uh, Kate that as well too. Also the right. link, to, also the link to the um, uh, the masterclass, Meet the Press masterclass. That is in the uh, link as well no. too. Definitely go and check that out. It's well worth it. I know that uh, we have Tracy Ellis online who's been along to that as well too. What did you think of it, Tracy? Not to oh. put you on the spot. <laughs> no, that's okay. that's okay. Am I unmuted? Yes. You are, yes. Um, oh, look, absolutely fantastic. I loved every minute of it and I will absolutely be back again. Um, such an enormous amount of information. I love listening to anything Kate has got to say about publicity because the more you hear, even tonight, even though I've been to a masterclass, just a couple of things um, reminding me of, oh, yes, don't do that, or that's right, keep doing that. And we've had an enormous amount of press, and I was only at the masterclass in May. So we've had um, TV, magazines, articles, um, and I've got another two big ones um, on the fire. 
I don't even know if that's the right way to say it, but cooking. Um, right. So absolutely worth it. And I will definitely be back again. Loved every minute of it and the enormous amount of information that she passed on. Just fantastic. Oh, thank you. And well done you on taking action afterwards because if you don't take the action, you won't get anything. So well done you. Absolutely. And, and I know she's been taking massive action with it, which has been uh, awesome. After a bit of hesitation, sort of asking, is it, do you think it'd be good to go to? Just go for it. <laughs> it was, it was. It certainly um, gave me a perspective that I, it was not how I viewed the media at all to begin with. And I was on Source Bottle before I went to the masterclass and I never got anything back ever. And I feel like a fool now with the things <laughs> that I would write. But now I get responses all the time. I responded to something on Monday and I'm writing for a trading magazine. They told me what they want and getting back to them with exactly what they want very, very quickly. So, Yay. yeah. So Good it's you. It's well certainly, done. Certainly worth it. The masterclass is unbelievable. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. All right, well, let's give a massive round of applause to Kate for sharing with us tonight. Thank you very much. And um, a couple of announcements. We have office hours tomorrow at 10 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. What's that, about 8 o'clock over in uh, Western Australia? It's uh, 9.30 in Central Australia. Uh, or um, I think it was at uh, 12 o'clock if you happen to be in New Zealand as well. So uh, office hours is a no agenda, no speaker. Uh, coffee chat uh, so just bring along any questions you've got anything you want to discuss we do have some awesome uh, discussions there as well too so mm. open for anyone to come along it's on zoom the uh, link is in chat there for you to go and uh, register for that uh, this here will be up on youtube tomorrow uh, at the end of tomorrow so the best thing to do if you want to watch it again best thing to do is go along to our youtube channel which is in chat or just search for smash go on youtube go and subscribe and then you'll get a notification when uh, it has been uh, uploaded. If you um, if you haven't joined the Facebook group, Business Owners Smashing an Online Facebook group, please go and do that. Uh, lots of ideas get shared there. Uh, and, um, you know, if you've got any apps and tools to drop in there, I'm always on the lookout for uh, new and bright and shiny objects there that I can uh, spend a lot of uh, time sort of uh, having a look through. And uh, it's a great place to um, uh, to also promote yourself to uh, and to really connect with other like-minded uh, business owners there as well too. And again, we have uh, Business Owners Smashing Online. We'll be happening again, this time again, uh, next week. Uh, and uh, we've got a treat for you uh, next week as well. So uh, keep an eye on your inboxes and also keep an eye on Business Owners Smashing Online. That's where we uh, post the uh, next event and details of it, plus all over the um, social media as well. So you can't miss us. All right, so that's it for, for this evening. That's a wrap. And uh, once again, thanks, Kate, for uh, joining us from uh, over in Western Australia. Hope you make it home all right. And uh, look forward to seeing everybody again, either tomorrow or next week. Have a great Thank night. You. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Enjoy your night. Bye-bye. Thank you.